All right. It is that wonderful time after the draft where the football season comes to pretty much a complete stop. <laughs> like this is probably the slowest time of the year for real. But you know, the one thing that's it's always interesting to me. I don't do fantasy football anymore, but you know, I mean, David, you know, I ran a league for many, many years. Right after the draft, it's just like right after a fantasy football draft. Everybody thinks they've hit home runs, right? And me and you, we've gone in our personal conversations, even on record, whatever, we've gone to say that like you truly need two to three years to go by before you could look back at a draft and accurately evaluate, you know, what whether the draft was a success or a failure or whatnot. So um, we can have some type of feeling about what the Bears did right now currently. You know, we had some type of feeling before the draft on what we wanted them to do. You know, uh, we went through the process and still came away with five players. The Bears traded back up into the fifth round to get their defensive end, Austin Booker, at the very end of it. But, um, but really, you truly won't know anything until some time has panned out, right? So, like, I, we could give our initial thoughts. But I don't know how much they're going to really matter because what really matters now is time. You got to just let some time play out. You've always said that it's always based on like a three year window and a clock. And there's a lot of times, and you can always reference the Seahawks draft of like getting an F, right? And then that probably ended up being the uh, the best draft in a while in the last like five years around it. And then also additionally that year. So uh, draft grades on the day of are kind of foolish and unfortunately never that accurate you know you mentioned the seahawks i just want to read you the 2012 bleacher report on the the draft grade for the seahawks so pete carroll is proving why he didn't make it in the nfl the first time not only was bruce Irvin a reach at number 15 the seahawks proved they were oblivious to their madness by celebrating their selection as if the day wasn't bad enough Seattle selecting Russell Wilson, a quarterback that doesn't fit their offense at all, was by far the worst move in the draft. With the two worst moves of the draft, Seattle's the only team that earns an F grade in the 2012 NFL draft. So, you know, th there you go, guys. Like, it, it's, it, it's that simple. Like, you can think one thing and the completely opposite can be true. We've seen it happen before in the past. So, um, you know, that's why we've taken that – rule of you, you just can't judge it too early on like you just need to kind of see it in order to have some type of opinion um but i think the way a team drafts is something that you can use uh to kind of dictate where they see things and maybe like how they are going to approach the following season just using the denver broncos for uh, as an example when you take bo Nix, that's like interesting to me it's confusing to me i don't really know where sean payton is heading with that team is he sticking around long term? Is he going to just get frustrated and like re-retire a year or two later? But it's interesting because you get you take a quarterback when you can take a quarterback. And um, I think the last I think most drafts prove that, you know, it's not necessarily always the first quarterback taken that ends up being the best. It's just one of the guys. Um, but the way the Bears drafted, I think, told me something and uh, that they were a little bit more win now than maybe me and you had anticipated going into this season. I think it's a brave choice. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, right? Because me and you, even going into the draft, were a little bit more uh, approaching, hey, this team doesn't have that much depth. This team is still probably a year away. The way Ryan Poles drafted, it's, it's super win now mentality. I think his rebuild for the most part is done. And every year you're going to see him or we can say this for sure with this draft, you're going to see him approaching it um, with more of a win now and adding key pieces. He didn't trade back, right? You take Roma Dunze. Um, if you were a little bit more uh, cautious, maybe planning more future, you probably trade back, take some more depth and get some more picks. But if you're saying, hey, like this guy can put us over the edge, then you take a, a player at one and a player at nine. Tory Taylor, our special teams coordinator, was on a uh, podcast with uh, CHGO, and he was talking about how Tory Taylor was uh, probably going to end up going in the fourth or fifth round. Tory Taylor is a, a luxury pick. You can do that when you're the Chiefs, and you just say, "Hey, we're we're going to be dominant on special teams." You can do that when you're like the Niners, and you say, "Hey, we've earned the right to draft punters in the fourth and fifth round." It takes a bold team that I think needs a little bit more. Uh, I don't know, gravitas, right? Some, some, you've earned the right to draft a punter. Um, however, if Tory Taylor is the best at his position or top five, I think it's a really important piece for any team. If you have a top five punter in the NFL and you're always pinning teams back within the 10 and you're giving your defense a lot more room to make mistakes, I think that's interesting. Um, and then Austin Booker, 
and the other additions were, I think, just necessary good pieces. Good draft, great draft. Um, we're not going to be the people to tell you, like, Super Bowl now, you know, but um, that's just because we're a little bit more realistic with optimism. Anything surpassing my expectations, which are reasonable, is going to be awesome and a nice bonus point. I think what the draft told us was how Ryan Poles is approaching this season and probably the season after, right? Because he's in win now mode. Your clock starts now. Your five-year rookie contract window started now. And he's not waiting for the rookie year to kind of be the dipping your toe in the water year like a lot of the teams do. And then they kind of try to capitalize on the third and fourth and fifth year of the rookie quarterback contract. He's going, we're going for it first and second year and riding it out the, the next five. And we're just going to keep supporting him and surrounding him. Yeah, it's really interesting because of the way a lot of teams do it or like new general managers do it is they tend to be, you know, a little bit more risky during the rebuild. Like we saw it here with Ryan Pace trading up for picks and, you know, signing back contracts and stuff like that just to get you to a position of where you can compete. Whereas Ryan Poles has taken the cautious approach during the rebuild. And now, like you said, he's pretty confident. He's not even going to dip his toe in the water. He's pretty confident that this will be the team that gives him the opportunity now moving forward. So the punter, it's definitely an aggressive move. Um, if they did think he was going to get drafted, I get why they did that. You know, the funny thing for me is, like, if you take Austin Booker in the fourth and you trade back up into the fifth to take Tory Taylor, I'm probably completely fine with it. Yeah, Which you still um, wind up with the same players, right, just in a different order. So it's like, yeah, whatever. But, you know, I, I want to just kind of quickly reference the 2018 to 2019 offseason where, like, all we needed was to replace Cody Parkey and we're good, right? So uh, – and we weren't good. We, we were far from good. We needed way more than that. But that was the total total focus of that entire offseason, getting kickers in here and this and that. And, like – you know, one, it's nice yeah. to be a step ahead of that, to not have special teams come and bite you in the ass when you are competing. Like, I, I get that. It's a very real thing. It happens to a lot of teams. There was a year where the Chargers had a top five defense and a top five offense, but they were the 32nd special teams in the league. They were given a punt returns, kick returns, left and right. They missed the playoffs with the top five defense and a top five offense. Right. So that stuff can really hurt you. Um, so I, I get trying to be one step ahead of that. You know what I mean? Because you don't that's a shitty situation to wind up in if it does bite you in the ass.